Australia is a land of extremes. Despite millions of years of evolution, our native species are finding new challenges as they face increasingly turbulent patterns in our climate. Australia's east coast, normally wetter and cooler than the hot interior, is a land of trees. Among the most widespread are our gum forests and woodlands, which are vital habitats for our native mammals. However, with increasingly persistent dry conditions and higher spikes in annual temperatures, can our forest specialists adapt? For one species in particular, understanding its ability to hang on in increasingly small forest remnants is now critical for its future. Flying from tree to tree, this poorly known creature is Australia's largest flying marsupial. This is the story of the greater glider. Dr. Teresa Eyre. I'm an ecologist with the Queensland Herbarium from the Department of Environment and Science. Today I'm going to talk about greater gliders and we are currently standing in greater glider habitat in Sheep Station Creek Conservation Park in Upper Caboolture. The greater glider is Australia's largest gliding possum and this makes it the largest gliding marsupial in the whole world. It is a really fluffy glider their fur can grow up to six centimetres long. They are unusual in that they come in a range of colours from really dark chocolate with a white chest and belly through to almost white. You can see both dark and pale greater gliders in the same population. They reach about 1.8 kilograms in weight, making them about 120 times larger than our smallest gliding possum, the feather tail glider. They are strictly nocturnal, meaning they only emerge at night and love eating eucalypt leaves just like koalas do. The obvious difference between possums and gliding possums is that gliders have a gliding membrane known as a patagium. This means that they can glide between the trees with very little effort. Being the only glider to eat eucalypt leaves, greater gliders are much more slow moving and quiet than the other glider species, which are largely nectar feeders and are therefore sugar fueled and sometimes quite noisy. Greater gliders are usually solitary, unlike other glider species that hang out in their family groups. Their home ranges are really quite small, about one to four hectares, and males tend to keep out of each other's territories. Greater gliders are only found in Australia, where they have a patchy distribution along the east coast and ranges. They don't occur in Tasmania, too cold, but their distribution extends from central Victoria all the way up to north Queensland, but not as far as Cape York which is too hot. Crater gliders only inhabit eucalypt forests as they depend entirely on eucalypt trees for food and shelter. Although they are found in a wide variety of different types of eucalypt forests throughout their range, for example, tall wet eucalyptus regnans forest of Victoria to the drier spotted gum forest similar to where we are today in Queensland, they do have preferences. In southeast Queensland, we find increased numbers of greater gliders in forests with eucalyptus terita cornus, spotted gums and grey gums, which tend to have much higher foliar nutrients than other species. These are also their favourite food tree species for koalas. But the very most important thing for greater gliders is large old eucalypt trees with well-formed hollows, which they use for shelter and breeding. Because they are so slow moving, they need a number of den trees per home range to better escape predators. The greater glider is a threatened species. It was listed as vulnerable under the Australian Environment Protection and Biodiversity Act in 2016 and under Queensland's Nature Conservation Act a year later in 2017. Greater glider populations are declining because of the severe modification to their habitat throughout their range. The big three threats, which tend to interact and cause cumulative impacts for greater gliders, include direct habitat loss and fragmentation through clearing and clear fill logging, intense and frequent fires, and rising temperatures due to climate change. Big old hollow bearing trees are incredibly important for greater gliders. Without somewhere for them to shelter during the day and protect their young during breeding season, the greater glider cannot and will not survive. Eucalypt trees take a really, really long time to form hollows suitable for use as a glider home, much longer than a human lifetime. In fact, habitat trees in southeast Queensland are estimated to be more than 400 years old. And in inland Queensland, where trees grow much more slowly, more than a thousand years. Unfortunately, because of historic clearing, logging practices and frequent fires, we find that live hollow bearing trees are limited in greater glider habitat 
Therefore, gliders tend to use old dead hollow bearing trees called stags as well. The problem with old live trees and stags is that they are susceptible to falling over in a windstorm or acting like chimneys during burns, even very low intensity prescribed burns. In southeast Queensland, in just 20 years, we have recorded a 25% decline in big live trees and more than 40% decline in large dead stags. Hi, I'm Matt Cecil. I'm from the Wildlife Preservation Society of Queensland. And we've been collaborating with Dr. Theresa Eyre for the past five years now on greater gliders in southeast Queensland. Through the Wildlife Preservation Society of Queensland, we run our Queensland Glider Network, and that's a network focused on community conservation of glider species, and particularly the greater glider. The community has a huge role to play in the conservation of our threatened species, and gliders are certainly a big part of that. Through reporting observations in people's backyards or in localised bushland, from installing nest boxes, through to simply following up and learning about gliders, the community has a, a big part to play. A lot of our work at Wildlife Queensland involves getting community people out into the bushland to have a look at gliders. And greater gliders are a great way to encourage people to learn about glider conservation. They're big, they're beautiful, they're easy to spot, and they really spark an interest in most people that get to see them. But once people have an interest, then we can talk to them about the conservation of our native species. Conserving greater gliders is a top-down approach. They're a big animal that requires lots of habitat. If we conserve greater gliders, it means we're conserving a whole range of wildlife all the way down to the forest floor. So it's an important species to work with from our perspective. If you've seen a greater glider or an animal you think might be a glider in your backyard, get in contact with us through Wildlife Preservation Society of Queensland and we'd love to hear about it. We really encourage community to report sightings of gliders. It's important for us to know where we're seeing gliders so we can put that on a map and that can help impinge on future development applications or just knowing how the population is going in general. So please if you have seen a glider in your backyard, a sugar glider, a squirrel glider, a greater glider, anything like that, um, get in contact with Wildlife Queensland and we'll talk you through how you can log that sighting. Conserving tree hollows is a giant part of the conservation of all of our glider species and greater gliders are no different. So please if you have a large hollow tree in your backyard, look after it, monitor it, keep an eye on what's using that tree, you'll be surprised at the amount of wildlife that lives inside hollow trees. Conserve native bushland, make sure it's connected, do your bit, talk to your local member, your politician, ask them to conserve corridors. We need wildlife to be able to move from area to area and gliders are no different. Conservation for gliders can be as simple as installing a nest box. We know they're hollow dependent and where hollows are limited or not in the bushland, we can install a nest box and replace that hollow resource. So it's a good way to help conserve the species. Wildlife Queensland has a great project targeting greater gliders. Before we started this project it was very unclear and not well known whether or not greater gliders used nest boxes. We've been able to show that they will in fact use a nest box which is really useful for their future conservation. I'm Weston Steinrichen, I'm from Nature Pacific. Today we are at Virgil Road in Parkridge South and we're in a squibbly gum forest here and tonight we'll be looking for the greater glider. So this all started, we got a grant from the Logan and Barrow Grants to undertake some research to essentially try another technology to monitor glider populations. And that's the use of thermal cameras mounted to drones, which we've had used successfully with koalas. So we wanted to see if that would be viable to use for greater gliders as well. Today is uh, our third time here. It hasn't been quite as easy as finding koalas due to a variety of reasons. One of them being that greater gliders are incredibly well insulated, so the heat signature is a lot less than a uh, koala is. Like a koala would be a big blob on our thermal uh, camera, but a greater glider is only visible once the temperature drops below roughly 14 degrees. So to address this issue, we went out here really early in the morning at like 3 a.m. when it was three degrees, because we were thinking temperatures of the surroundings would be very low, so the contrast would be higher. So it still remains to be seen if this is actually valuable for monitoring greater glider populations. We'll draw our conclusions at the end of this uh, research. At Nature Pacific, we also, we work together with Queensland TAFE, where we provide materials and designs for nest boxes, uh, which we then install and monitor to see how successful they are and at the moment we're going to trial a new greater glider box. We're going to start an installation of these soon um, so monitoring will happen in a few months time to see if there's an uptake of these boxes. So if you want to find more about our nest box initiative head to our webpage and check us out. The world is a better place with greater gliders in it but not many people know about them. This is mainly because they only come out at night, they don't move much from the treetops and they are so quiet. Next time you go for a bushwalk, look out for big old habitat trees and tell your friends and family about how important they are for our wildlife and particularly for the greater glider.
take a torch or a spotlight next time you go camping near forest. If you do find one, be sure to let us know about it. We need to continue to learn about greater gliders and the characteristics of their habitat. But we can only do this together where councils, state and federal governments work together with community groups and researchers. We need to have a common goal to not only share information, but to make sure protective conservation measures like preserving, hollow bearing trees and putting up nest boxes are put into action.